Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Crawford and today we'll be painting some abstract watercolor bookmarks. Don't forget if you enjoyed this video to like and subscribe for future content. Today I'll be starting with my Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. And I've got my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor pan set, a jar of water, and of course a warm cup of coffee. Today I'll be using my Princeton Aqua Elite brushes. I'll be doing some more wet painting today and these brushes really do hold a lot of water. And then since we're painting bookmarks today, I have actually already taped my paper into three sections. I'm using this uh, gentle surface painter's tape that um, really does peel off nicely and doesn't damage the watercolor paper. So I'm going to mix up some colors straight out of my pan set today. I think we'll do three different designs, um, very different shapes, but we'll stick with the same color palette on all three so that we've got some consistency between the, the three bookmarks we'll be making today. So first I'm going to start with some mauve and to make these this pattern or really it's it's kind of a floral pattern. I'm just going to start with some small dots of paint that are really highly pigmented and then I'm going to rinse off my brush so it's really just saturated with some clean water and I'm just going to touch the paint and drag out on both sides of that petal and then just try to move that color and this design will really be very abstract but I'm inspired by a floral and I want it to be very wet and flowy and so I'm just gonna again rinse off my brush and grab some water do that to the second one and we'll, we'll eventually be pulling these all the way out and to the rest of the page so that they kind of disappear into the color of the paper. Just adding some more water and we'll repeat these steps on the next few petals. You'll see I'm just, as after I pull out the paint, I'm just gonna add some additional water and let the color bleed and just kind of get this really interesting pattern. And you can see I just pulled that water all the way out to the edge of the paper or right to meet the tape. So it's going to be kind of a floral inspired but a sunburst pattern and so I'm just going to go around and do that to the rest of the petals and you do want to work fairly quickly so that that spot of paint that you put down doesn't dry before you get around to it so again just pulling the paint out loading my brush full of water and then using that water to kind of guide the paint onto the rest of the paper. And now we've got the last section here. I'm dragging the paint out. With this one, I don't want to take the water all the way to the edge of the paper on the right because I want to put another flower there while this one dries. And so I want that, that paper to stay dry. So I'm just going to kind of taper it off and leave some dry paper on the bottom. So that's it for the first one. Now we'll move on to the second one. So that was some mauve. I'm going to pull out some permanent rose right out from my palette. And again, with a nice wet dot, five of them. 
and then rinse my brush off, load it with some clean water. I'm just touching the dot and then pulling to both sides and then just using my brush to move around that paint, kind of pull it out a bit and then I'll rinse it, grab some more clean water and try to get it to flow into a more abstract pattern. We'll continue this on these five petals and where it overlaps because the one underneath is still wet. I'm just going to do some light brush work to get it to start to bleed together. But since it's still wet, it should blend nicely. And you can see here, even though my shapes are not very exact, or again, this is abstract, I'm trying to keep a nice white line or some separation in between these shapes to add some texture and actually maybe a little bit of dimension. And you can see here the dots of paint have started to kind of dry a little bit, so I'm just using my brush to kind of work a wet brush to kind of work that paint a little bit and I'll probably drop some more color on top just to try to cover up that dry mark that started to form there. And I just dropped that paint in. I'm gonna let it bleed and see what it does and Right now we'll move on to the next flower. So first I was thinking maybe a blue, uh, but I just changed my mind. I think we're going to stick to kind of pinks and purples and I'm just going to take some dioxazine purple right out of my palette. It's a, a darker purple. And again, we're just going to make those five wet dots. wash off our brush and grab some clean water. Now we're going to do the same thing here. The only difference now is that the layer underneath is now dry. So um, the colors aren't going to necessarily start blending together. because It's not wet, but we're just going to layer this on top of the other and get kind of a nice transparent or translucent effect where they overlap. And I'm just rotating my paper to get a better angle. Pulling the paint out again. This is the last flower. Then we've got dry paint underneath, so I'm going to add some water, clean water, and then use kind of a drier brush technique to just spread that out and fade it out on top of the one behind it. the last two sections here. And there we go. There is our first bookmark. Now we'll move on to the second one. And I think, like I said, we'll keep the same color palette. 
but do a bit of a different design. And for this, I think we'll do some circles or spheres. And so I'm just going to start with a wet circle and then grab some pigment and drop it around the outside um, and then try to wet up the middle and with some clean water and do some blending around the edges to make these look um, kind of transparent and push the pigment to the edge. I'm going in here first with the mauve and just taking a wash and dropping that on the wet circle and now I'm taking a wet brush and I'm just going to wet up the middle part touch it to the paint and start to push that pigment around so it'll be much lighter in the middle of the circle and much more pigmented at the edge. It'll give some shape to the sphere um, and then also kind of give that translucent appearance. And I'm just kind of cleaning up the edge or finding that edge as I drop in more color. And now we'll do a, another one down here, same color. This time I think I'm going to fill the whole circle in and then maybe drop some pigment around the edge and see how that blends. So wetting that circle up, grabbing some that mauve and just dropping it in edges and then a key to keeping this pigment on the edge is to not have it too wet um, the less water you have in your brush when you drop the pigment in the more pigment it will be I do want this to be kind of light and delicate so I'm, I'm using a, a wash and if you get too much water just dry off your brush and kind of move it around. We'll sop up some of that excess moisture and then also push the pigment to the edge with your brush stroke. And I'm even just adding a little bit more clean water right there in the center, which should help push some of the pigment Again, out toward the edge and then moving that around to try to get a more gradient effect. So now let's do one in dioxazine purple. So I'm just mixing up a wash of the color straight out of my pan. And then cleaning off my brush and getting some, some clean water. I think I liked starting with the, the filled circle. So we'll get our shape and fill the circle and then start dropping that pigment around the edge and moving it around until we get it right where we like it. So we'll do a couple of these in purple. I'm going to do another purple one down here, but it's going to be kind of going off of the page. 
or the section of the page. And so I'm just trying to visualize that circle. And we'll do the same thing, drop the pigment in around the edge and refine the shape. And now we're going to go in with Opera Rose, which is really bright and vibrant pink. Our third color. And I really like the one that went off the page. So we'll do another kind of larger one here in the pink. And just getting that shape. And then we'll fill this circle. some clean water. Still just refining my shape a little bit. I want to make sure this looks round. Even though it's going off the page. And so I want to get a highlight back here, so I just added a little bit of water, kind of moved it around, and then used my paper towel to soak up some of that pigment. And I'm going to go back around with the color, wash off my brush, dry it again, and then try to blend and move that around toward the edge. And we'll do another one right up here in the corner. I think another pink one. Just dropping in some clean water and then drop in some pink pigment around the outside. We'll just continue making more of these circles. So right now, I'll just speed the video up a bit and we'll see the end result. And there we have our second bookmark, some floating bubbles, maybe. <laughs> so for the next one, I think we'll do like a wet on wet. Um, 
not really sure what yet, so I'm just going to start with a really wide, wet brush, and I'm just going to making some strokes in a diagonal motion. Really don't know what I'm doing here, but we'll use those same three colors. So I'll just pick it up a little bit and I'm gonna follow that same stroke pattern. Picked up a little bit of the pink. And I'm um, just gonna keep adding some water and pigment and see where it takes us. I'm just kind of randomly placing the paint, but at the same time trying to maybe create a little bit of balance of where I place it. So it's kind of looking and feeling and thinking where I want the paint to live. <laughs> Okay, that looks nice. So we made kind of a neat diagonal pattern here. So now I'm just going to grab a really large brush. I've got this size 20 snap brush. I'm just going to grab some water, some clean water, and drop it right here on the wet canvas. And it should create some flowering watermarks and just kind of a random abstract pattern. I'm just going to let that sit and make some watermarks on the paper. And there we have it. There's our three abstract bookmarks. And now I think I'm going to take my heat tool out just to give this third one a quick dry and then we'll remove the tape and take the paper off the block and Go ahead and cut these into some bookmarks. Okay, our paper and paint are now completely dry, so I'm going to take off the tape. Just unstick it from the bottom of my paper block. Pull it back. Get that nice crisp edge. Of course we're going to trim these into some bookmarks so we will trim right at that edge. There we go. Those really did turn out very pretty. I like this color combination quite a bit. Purple is one of my favorite colors. I would say pink maybe a second. And so um, the combination of these three together really did turn out pretty nice. So I am using a cold press block of watercolor paper. So on the block, all four edges are glued together. And this helps keep your paper from warping, but to remove it, you just take a palette knife, insert it in that section there and just Move it all the way around the edge and then we'll be able to remove the block of paper. And there we go. And we'll set the paper aside. And the easiest way for us to trim these into bookmarks will be to use a paper cutter. So I'm just going to set these in here and kind of eyeball where that edge is and just try to cut right, right over the edge. So we get a nice clean cut. 
go. And then trim both edges of the middle bookmark. These little scraps of paper are actually really good to save um, and I use them for test strips when I'm trying to come up with a color palette for uh, another painting. So never waste good watercolor paper. So we'll just trim this last one. There we go. Paper cutter comes in really handy. Um, it's quick and you get some nice straight clean lines. So. Tidy up our excess here and there you have it. There are our three abstract bookmarks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.